So this is the discovery and execution of entirely new classes of web attacks in order to meet your girlfriend. So before we begin, a little bit about me. I'm a security researcher. Narcissistic vulnerability pimp is what they're calling them these days, right? Um, I do not do security professionally. I do it for fun, like most of you guys, or some of you guys. Uh, I'm known for the Sammy worm, uh, the worm on MySpace, a couple of years ago. Uh, I co-founded Phonality, an IPPBX company. Uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with Trixbox, we developed that. And I love Lady Gaga. But I, I love Ke Kesha, too. It's kind of in between. I'm not sure. Um, you're probably wondering, like, why haven't I heard of this guy? Or hasn't this guy done, he's done nothing for a couple of years. Uh, why is that? They didn't let me touch computers. <laughs> it's true. It's true. A few years ago, I was raided by the Secret Service, the Electronics Crimes Task Force. They came into my home. They took all of my computers. Well, my, my laptop. Uh, they took my phone. They took any CDs, DVDs. They took my Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Dealt with court. Literally could not touch computers. I was banned for life. A couple years later, I fought and I fought. And uh, I am now back. Lots to touch computers. All right. But I'm not allowed on MySpace. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Talk about the web. Why the web? Honestly, you know, I got bored of the web a couple years ago. You know, it's really cool. There's so much you can do with it. But security is so much broader, right? There's so much cool stuff going on here at DEF CON, uh, just in security in general, right? You have reverse engineering. You have network security. You do have web application security. Uh, there's hardware hacking, all this cool stuff. Uh, some people have even made ATMs dispense cash. You probably haven't heard about that. It's, it's a really cool uh, new thing that, that they're talking about. But the web is actually really cool in another way. Everyone has a web browser. If you get a computer and you have an operating system, you have a web browser. So it's like the one piece of software that allows me to deliver code to you and for you to execute it. It is basically code delivery mechanism that I can attack anyone, anyone. Everyone has the internet today. Um, it's kind of like when the App Store came out for the iPhone, right? At that point, you could deliver any sort of uh, content that you wanted. Of course, Apple bans malicious content. And fortunately, they give us freedom from porn. Um, so the web browser is just like that, except no one's guarding it. There's no one checking to make sure that your site's not malicious. I mean, obviously, there are companies that are doing this in software that's working on this. But for a long time, there hasn't been. So this is my home page. It's, it's probably for many of you. Uh, Anna Ferris, she's amazing. Um, I'm in love with her. So I was checking out you know, just pictures of girls on, on a social network, as I typically do before I get in a lot of trouble. And uh, I, I found her. And I think, man, she's amazing. You know, She's the kind of girl I want to get to know. So I'm looking at her profile, looking through her pictures. I, I can't really see too much. She's, she's not my friend. Uh, thought about that for a second. And then I saw, oh man, you know, I should message her. But then I saw she's in a relationship. Not an open relationship. It's not complicated. She's in a relationship. <laughs> so I'm like, who is this guy, and how am I going to best him? So I, I look into him a little bit. All right, so this guy, he's a certified information security specialist professional. Yeah, chief executive officer of Sec Theory. Ooh, co-author of XSS Exploits. Oh, no, author of Detecting Malice. Co-developer of Clickjacking, really cool uh, technology, with the really awesome Jeremiah Grossman. Runs Hackers.org and Slackers.org, if you guys have ever been there. And he's a certified ass, which is an application security specialist. <laughs> it's pretty impressive resume. A man who needs no introduction, Robert R. Snake Hansen. This guy. So here's the problem. I want to attack this guy. You know, we all know we can attack random people on the web. You know, you have a little bit of malicious content on there, and you'll get, you know, some sort of hit rate. And if you get enough, enough visitors, you will be attacking random people. But I want to do a targeted attack to someone who is secure. You know, someone like you people who understand security, who are probably running with uh, a lot of technology to help secure yourself. 
So, how do we do it? How do I attack him? You don't. You do not attack that person. You attack him directly. Ooh, that's what I'm trying to attack. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. So, he's on Facebook. Facebook is an awesome website. It's a social network. It's the cool one these days. Now, if we go to Facebook, we'll see something in the URL bar. Index.php. I know what you're thinking. It's FIP. It's not. It's PHP. I looked it up. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a computer language, right? Typically for the, used for the web. It's an extremely common web language. I'm sure all of you have at least heard of it. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, program in it. It's great because it's extremely common. So it's well understood. The code is open source. You can all go and look at it and see what's going on in there. It has extremely, uh, it, it basically has very good session management that everyone uses. Every single person who does PHP and uses sessions typically uses the built-in session, session management. Um, if you're using frameworks like Coke, uh, Cake PHP or Kohana or Code Igniter or any of those other things, they're also using this session management. So PHP sessions, uh, what are they? They're basically a random string that's generated. It's passed either in the URL or cookies. So what are cookies? Yeah, it's my second favorite. A cookie is basically a persistent piece of text that remains with your browser. I'm sure all of you are familiar with it. Just contains data. Typically, it'll contain a session data. Session data is basically a random string so that when you go to any page on that website, it can identify you with other information the server has stored locally. So when you go to Facebook and you log in with a username and password, they provide you a random string that is assigned to that username. If you ever go to any other pages later on, they look at that random string that you're sending them, and they say, oh, I, I know this guy. This is Sammy. So it authenticates you. So let's try, let's try to attack a session. Let's look at PHP session code. It's open source. So we pull up session.c. This is the function session start. This is what creates a session in PHP. Uh, basically what happens is it creates your random string right here in the snippet of code in this S, uh, spprintf. It's looking at a couple of things. It's looking at the IP address of the person authenticating or, or getting this session. It looks at the epoch, which is basically a time from January 1st, 1970, the number of seconds. It's looking at the microseconds that that person acquired the cookie. And it's looking at a random, just a random number that's created. So if we take all of that, that's 160 bits of entropy. We're going to get a little deep here, uh, just for a little bit. So 160 bits is a lot if I were to brute force it. Let's say I wanted to become our snake on Facebook. What I would do is I would brute force this session, that random string. But 160 bits, that's a lot. Now, bits can be a little confusing. We'll just do a really quick primer. You know, 64 bits is not double 32 bits. Every time you add a bit, you're at doubling. So, uh, just a quick primer, what we can do is a little trick. For every 10 bits, you can add three zeros. So 10 bits is 1,000. 20 bits, a million. Uh, 30 bits, a billion. Also, if you can just remember the 10 bits, uh, 0 through 9 equals 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 56, 5, 12. You can take that number to figure out what you want. So 25 bits, we know 5 is 32. And the 20 bits, right, two, uh, is six zeros. So 32 million in that scenario. So 160 bits is essentially 10 to the 48. If we could brute force at 100 trillion values per second, it would take 900 quadrillion eons to brute force. <laughs> I didn't even know what an eon was. I had to look it up. It's 500 million years. It's a lot. Brittany knows. <laughs> so. Again, 160 bits. We're not going to brute force this. It doesn't matter how fast of a computer you have. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer. Well, microseconds isn't really 32 bits. Microseconds, they're only a million microseconds per second. Well, a million, if we remember, is only 20 bits, right? Because there are six zeros. So we actually just reduce, without doing anything, the 160 bits, and we reduce 12 bits. 
and got it down to 148 bits, which doesn't help us. It's, that's a lot. So let's take a little let's take a little closer look. If you're familiar with Facebook, it has chat. When you go online, uh, or when someone logs in and you look in the chat window, you actually see that person come online. How is that happening? That's happening with Ajax. Your client is continuously checking with Facebook to see is someone else logging in, is someone going offline, just to understand, uh, get an updated status. Well, if you use something like live HTTP headers or a packet sniffer or something, you can see the HTTP requests going back and forth, and you can recreate those if you'd like. And what you can do is you can just send that request, is there anyone new online, every single second. As you're sending it every second, one of these times, our sync is going to go on because he wants to check if anyone poked him. The cool thing about this is that if you see here in the red, the date is actually, uh, the date in red is sent from the server. The server sends us their local time. Our local time doesn't help us too much because we don't really know the difference between our local time and the server's local time. That local time helped create that cookie, if you recall. So that 32 bits, if we are checking every second, we can now reduce that 32 bits as soon as our snake comes online, just by watching that every second. We write a program to do that. We see him come online, we take that date, convert it to epoch, we just reduce 32 bits. We've now reduced the 160 bits by 44 bits down to 116 bits. That's awesome. It's still a lot. Let's go further. So he comes online. We can send him a message. Well, why not send him to my blog, namb.la, Nambla. <laughs> so you send him there, and then what you do is you just track the IP address. Don't worry, there's no XSS. There's nothing on there. If he's running no script or something that's protecting him, there's nothing malicious on my website. So he goes there. Nothing happens to his browser. He sees a really cool blog post and, uh, about how uh, I did a DEF CON talk and everyone loved it. And what we do is we track the Apache logs and we see his IP address. Well, there's another 32 bits of that cookie. So we're now down to 84 bits from 160. We're basically half, well, it's not really half. OK, bits. Ugh, so confusing. All right, so the only thing left here that we don't know we don't know 20 bits of the microseconds, and we're not going to guess that. There's no way we're accurately going to guess 20, the microsecond that someone logged in on a remote system. You might be able to if you tried really hard, if you got a system really close and you time things really accurately, but it's not worth it. So the only other thing left here is this random LCG value, 64 bits. What is this? An LCG is a linear congruential generator. It's a pseudo-random number generator. They've been studied for years. I can't like. I don't know, 25 years ago or something. It's older than I am. If you, uh, if they're really well studied and they're really well understood. Uh, you can actually look up information on how to reverse them. The LCG used here is actually two LCGs that are combined. So it's a little bit harder. And I'm not that good at math. So I didn't understand it too well. But I looked over the code anyway. Now, as soon as the LCG or the, the random number generator is called, it's seeded. The seed basically provides the actual random data that provides every single random number from here on out. Now, the seed is critical to the randomness of the, the PRNG. So let's take a look at the seed function here, this LCG seed at the bottom side of the screen. What you'll see is we do a get time of, there, there's two parts of the seed, and it's 64 bits. It's 64 bits of entropy, and every random number is also 64 bits. It's split into two, called S1 and S2. They're each 32 bits long. Now, S1, if you can see, is this thing called TV seconds XORed by the ones complement of TVU seconds. What that is is that's the epoch, as soon as it's seeded, XORed with the ones complement of the microseconds that uh, the PRNG was seeded. S2 is the process ID. So let's just take a look at S1 a little bit more. That's 32 bits of entropy we're looking at right now. The interesting thing about this is the microseconds that, or I'm sorry, the seconds that the PHP was seeded was probably when the web server started. We don't necessarily know when that happened, but we can, we can potentially make an, uh, an estimate. We could also send thousands and thousands of requests to a web server to get it to reset and to get, figure out when it started. One of the issues is we won't know which request caused that restart, but we can make an assumption that it happened in the last hour if we send enough requests. Now, what they do to make this harder to guess